Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today I thought I'd show you an update to a, an earlier video. If you go back and watch, I did a comparison between a bunch of 230cc-ish small block Chevy CNC ported heads, and this was one. This was a Brodix, or is, it's a Brodix Track 1 233 CNC ported head. And the customer asked me to improve the head, so in other words, port it. And I'm showing you what's all did to the head and how much it gained. So, cause it, it did gain quite a bit. So if you're unfamiliar with this head, this one comes from Brodix. And when you initial form, it's CNC ported. And in initial form, it has a 2125 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. It doesn't need shaft rockers, it's stud mount. It's actually a pretty good head. It also usually has a 68 cc chamber from the factory, but you can order with smaller ones. So what all did I do to the head? Well, let me go ahead and run through some of it. First off, I don't, I don't like the way they CNC ported this chamber. As you can see this square right here, it's really worse before you mill it. So the first thing I did was I surfaced the head and I dropped it 24 thousandths. One, because I wanted to um, reduce some of the chamber, but the two really is just to get rid of some of that. It, it's horrible. That transition from the top cut here to this, um, it's hard to make that work when it's so laid back like what it was. So the idea was I'll mill it, then I can drop the valve job down in and I get my top cut in and it'll be fine. So that's the first thing that happened. The second thing that happened is um, the customer asked, hey, do you, why don't we put in some 5 16 um, intake valves, you know, to reduce weight. And said, absolutely. He also wanted to go to a larger valve, so we did. So, went to a 5 16 intake stem and kept the exhaust at 11 30 seconds. And in case you're wondering, 5 16 is a few thousandths smaller than an eight millimeter. Um, the 5 16 valves are easier to come by, especially in certain lengths, than they are eight millimeter stuff, in case you're wondering why I didn't do that. The intake valve grew from a 2125 to a 215. Because this head is a 4060 spacing head, which means you could put a 215 intake valve and a 1600 valve and still have room in between. So that's what I did. So changed the guide, honed that out, went to a 215 intake valve diameter on a 516 stem. Just let me show you what I mean by that. Let me grab it real quick. Sorry about the little pause here. There we go. This is the stem on the intake valve. This is the intake valve. So you can see it's much smaller than the 11 30 seconds on the exhaust which may lead you to ask why didn't you just do that on the exhaust well, on the exhaust side i don't really ever put in 5 16s or small diameter valves because yes it reduces weight but it also reduces stiffness and the exhaust valve has to open against pressure because you can think about it all the explosions happen and it's opening against pressure and it's it's pretty tough on the valve so keeping the thicker stem the better way to go you might gain some flow but you may have sacrificed a bunch of other stuff so anyway Back to the intake though, I did a 50 degree valve job, so I, but I was different from what Brodix uses. Mine's dramatically different. I then opened up the throat a little bit and also the bowl, and I'll show you the measurements in a minute. And you can tell it actually looks a lot bigger. You can go back and watch the previous video. I have no idea how to edit and stitch it in here. Um, so don't ask me for that. So I did that. On the exhaust side, changed to 50 degree too, because if you're doing 50 degree on the intake and you're worried about wear, there's no sense of keeping a 45 on the exhaust, just go 50. Plus, I actually think the 50 is better for power. Now, if you do look at this head, there is some signs. You see that little black there? These heads I did blast, but I don't super blast them hard because um, if you do it, you can, it'll find holes that you don't want to find. So, in other words, I turned down the pressure pretty low, just knocking off the carbon. But right here and here, you can see those are gone. They're gone from other cylinders too. What that is an indication of is you've got like a lean mixture and it's trying to burn or pull that aluminum out and it's just looking for fuel and it's finding it there this isn't something to be overly worried about because i've seen some that have been far far worse and um, changed out the seats and put new ones in after welding this up and it doesn't seem like it really make a difference because unless it's worse like this isn't bad but when you get them out here quite a ways and it's more scary just because it's more worried about the to me worried about the seat movement itself from being located so that's when I worry. This isn't bad at all. But it's, see, like that one's not as bad. It's just an indication you need to watch your... Chances are you either have too much timing or your air fuel mixture is really lean. So look for that. It's not the end of the world. Don't, don't, don't forget it. This also kind of ex explains why several heads, LS included, will crack between here because of this 
I mean, this is also a sharp point no matter which head you do. LS is like the five threes and stuff, the valves have pulled out so there's more distance between. But like on these, there's a sharp edge because the two valve jobs are meeting. So that's not necessarily helping things and you get the idea. So anyway, that's changed. And we'll flip around and we'll show you the old intake side here. Let me just reset up my camera. Okay, from this view, you can kind of see what I've done, but I'll just kind of go through it real kind of quickly. I'll bring out the measurements you can actually see. Yes, I'm going to share them with you because it's not that big a deal. Um, you probably noticed the brass tube there. This looks like it's a huge deal, but what they do from the factory is they have actually have the CNC bulge there. To make it easier for me to grind, I usually grind that out just so I can make the shape on the short side better. And then I put a brass tube through. Some people don't even put those in, but I do. I, I kind of... Uh, I did it a long time ago. There was a back-to-back -back test, and it did seem like I made more power. So, anyway, uh, short side got a little bit wider, obviously. I didn't drop down the height because on this one, there's CNC ported from the factory. You, the height is kind of short anyway, so there's no sense in reducing it worse. Although I did reduce it some, but not as much as you'd think. Um, pretty much just widening it to match the bowl. Brought this out as well. So, widen the short side. Did lay it back a little bit, which dropped some of the height. But not considerably, because after all, like I said, just a little short. I did do this. It From the factory, it has a ski jump, which means it's literally angled like that on the push rod side, so it's actually getting narrower. I dug out the floor just to gain some more area here at the push rod pitch. Because it only had like 2.3 at the cross section. This guy's put them on a 434 and ran it that way. That's too small, especially for any RPM. So, obviously made it bigger through here. Now it's about 2.63 square inches. It's really wide, and honestly, I probably could dig down further and get more cross-sectional area. Or, I know you're like, why don't you guys just raise it up? You could do a 1207. In other words, raise it up higher instead of doing the floor. Because honestly, the worst spot to take it from is the floor. You should probably take it from here. The catch is, and most people forget about this point, you still have to make a manifold work with it. So, not a lot of manifolds work with this because they just don't have enough material up here. So, the gasket really won't seal unless you weld up on the manifold. So... This is it, 2.63. It's about normal for a stud mount deal. I can go a little bit larger, but not by much. So there's that. The exhaust port, just normal stuff. No sense in showing that. Let's get to the flow numbers and show you how much it gained. Actually, before I do flow numbers, let me go ahead and show you the measurements so you can see how much it's changed. So this is stock. So we, I do throat, bowl, short side, push rod, and you get your areas. So the bowl initially, or throat initially, was 1.95. And that was on a 2125 valve. It's actually 1.97 now. So about 20 thousandths bigger, even though it's a 215 intake valve. But really the throat, and by the way, I'm leaving out the stem. Really the throat's a little bit larger than that because the stem's smaller. So there's more throat area now available. The bowl, it went from 202, which was 95% of the valve diameter, to 2.214. So you see much larger there, 103%. The short side area went with 2.89 cross-sectional area to a 3.14. The push rod's the biggest difference. So it went from a 2.33 to a 2.62. Uh, that's pretty big. And then you can also tell 1030 at the short side to deck to 930. Now it looks like, oh, you removed 100 thou. That's more than you said. Don't forget, I milled the head. So milling took off about, I think it was 28. So 30 thousandths was gone from milling. The rest came from grinding. So anyway, there's some of the numbers. Now let's actually get the flow numbers. Here are the flow numbers. Now this was on the Sains bench, which is this one right here. I floated also on my Superflow 750 right here. But the stock flow numbers came from the Sains Digital 680. So these are the stock numbers right here, and this is ported. So you can see the difference. So I'll go through with some of this. I know some of you listen instead of watch, which is fine. I actually wish YouTube had in just an audio version where you didn't have to have your phone screen on and it could just play the video, the audio so you could hear what's going on without listening to it or seeing it. But for whatever reason, they don't. Anyway, if you look at this, uh, the gain at you know, 100, nothing really. But at 200, it gained quite a bit. So and at 300, more than 10. This was a big gain. The one numbers I really care about are 4, 6, and peak. And I've told you this many times. 400, that's 262. There's only a handful of 23 degree heads, standard port, that have ever done that number, 260 at 4, ever on my flow inch. Just a handful. So that's a really, really good number. 299 at five compared to the 285 it was before. That's a huge gain, almost 15 CFM. Um, 
these two numbers telling me the head's gonna make some steam. 324 at six, that's not bad. That's actually a really, really good number, um, but there has been some 23 low port stuff that I've done that's been a little bit better than that. But that that's pretty good. 332, 333, 334, 35, and then it goes 342 at one. You're like, what happened there at one? Why did it jam so much when it was just kind of slowly climbing the chamber? I did, because of the milling, it also moved some of this, so I did scoot the chamber out. And honestly, I probably could have scooted more out to help with the one inch flow. But what it does is, and that's why it's, once the valve's out of the way, so when you get to like the one inch, it's much better. But in this range right here, which would be the valve somewhere in this range, you could tell the spark plug's there. You can remove more of that spark plug, not a good idea, and get more flow, but then you have other issues. So yeah, it's always kind of low in there because of that. But, and once it's away from it, so you can see like, as soon as it gets to here, the air flows more. And that's why you get that little spike. But it's, I don't think it's anything to worry about. That definitely with these numbers here, the four, five, and six number, we got a beast, got a beast. Especially in standard port, non-shaft rockers required pretty good. Exhaust flow, even though it's a 50 degree valve job. Um, apologies, the air compressor decided to kick on. But anyway, now it's a 50 degree valve job. You expect it to lose some low lift flow, which it does. So you could tell at 200, it really did. Which like, wasn't that horrible, especially at one? Isn't that horrible? No, that's not what I, if you can kill the low lift flow, it, to me, it's better on the exhaust because it helps with reversion, having it not as good down here than jumping up. So anyway, at 400 or 300, about the same, 400, it's better. And then from that point on, it's just, it's good. It's really, really good. Now that was all on the Sains bench, but just out of curiosity, I floated over on the Superflow. So these are the numbers from the Superflow. You could tell it reads higher, obviously, even though it's the same bore fixture and everything. Four, it says 271, five, 310, and six, 338. These two numbers here are definitely in the higher tier of heads I've had on there, 23 degree heads, period, that have been on the bench. Um, just like here, these are the definitely in the higher tier that's ever been on that bench. Same here. Even though it's a low port, doesn't require uh, shaft rockers. Really good through four and five. Six is pretty good too. It's it's near the top, but it's not the top. It's not as good as these ones are as far as others. So if I compare it to other 23 degree heads, what I'm trying to say is these numbers here are n near the top. This one is like in the upper part of the top that I've seen. Then it goes all the way to 354. So it does, it, it climbs all the way. And this is, if you watch one of my previous videos, I said about the way that the motor controllers work, that the Zanes and the Superflow don't read the same kind of because of that, about how quickly or slowly it gets up to 20 inches. And you can kind of see it here. But anyway, very good there. Exhaust flow shows about the same as that. So really, really good head. So hopefully you got something out of this. It's a nice head, worked out pretty good. The customer should be really happy. He's pairing with an Edelbrock 2892, which is the Super Victor 2 that I've ported. There should be a beast. Anyway, guys, remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.